and we will be speaking to Stephen Bassett. Now, while we grab the guests on the air, Blake Cousins, tell everybody what's new on Third Phase of Moon. Well, we just had an incredible interview with Dr. Stephen Greer. New updates, incredible insight. You know, the insight that he came that came to us. We're getting behind the scenes from the CIA, from President, from Bill Clinton to the Obama uh, administration. The cover up. Why is it being covered up? Well, that's the big question, and we at Third Phase Moon is trying to find out. And we're going to have up shortly right here is uh, Stephen Bassett. He put together the congressional hearing in Washington D.C. It was quite incredible. The the press on it when they did this the first time. I think it was the most watched internet streamed video in Washington. The Washington D.C. hearing ever. I think maybe about a billion or. You know, 800 million plus watch this. So the, he was an incredible, had an incredible way of getting the word out to the masses, and that's what we're trying to do at Third Phase of Moon. If anybody's captured anything amazing, the best way to contact us is, is Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook, and we may uh, showcase your incredible piece of evidence. We're looking for good UFO shots, phenomenon, scientific research, new new technology we just did a recent special called liquid robotics right here at third phase of moon where we went out into the middle of the pacific ocean i dived uh, you know about a mile deep of water predators everywhere there's tiger sharks are, uh, you know around it was quite scary but we're hanging out with new technology known as the wave glider and it harnesses the energy from the ocean current and it reports back to base and some of the bases and these clients are picking these things up. They're about two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a piece. And uh, Liquid Robotics' biggest client is the Department of Defense. And I asked why and what are they doing with these things, and they really couldn't answer my question. But there was some, some theories that came in because the guy that designed this, first of all, he didn't want anything to do with the military. He, he was just kind of uh, wanting to find out and listen to well sounds from his own home. But other people are coming out that he also may have wanted to know and find different signals that unknown creatures that live in the abyss of the ocean have their own signature sounds. And he was looking for these uh, signature sounds that we've never heard before. Mermaids? Was he, was he looking for mermaids? We don't know. But the, the documentary, again, Liquid Robotics, Robert uh, Robots of the Sea, you got to check it out at Third Phase Moon. It was... Uh, absolutely stunning and incredible to be out there in the open ocean now so we're still everybody standing by we're going to get mr stephen bassett on the line and we're uh, looking forward to asking him the big questions he's not afraid to you know uh, answer them you know we call him kind of the pet bull guy out there for disclosure because he doesn't uh, shy down to anything he's out there getting and asking the big questions as well to the right people congressmen are coming forth astronauts uh, retired Air Force pilots, you name it, he has it, and, you know, the information is getting out. So that's the main thing about Third Phase of Moon Radio. Everybody is standing by. And do we have Mr. Bassett? Is Mr. Bassett standing by, Dr. J? I guess we're having some uh, issues with uh, trying to get our connection. Also, we're going to go back to some of the other uh, videos right here in Third Phase of Moon that we just posted this week. One of them is Top UFO Sightings, Incredible Accounts of Bizarre Encounters of Missing Time. Well, it was quite incredible. Just last week, Friday, on uh, you know our radio show blog, we really don't interview people. We just kind of let the lines open and take accounts. If you have a, an account, an eyewitness, maybe breaking news, uh, eye sightings going on at that time. People have called in, and it was quite amazing. But in this last radio show, four people called in, and they all were from around different parts of America. And they all shared one thing in common. It was missing time. Uh, people that have these UFO encounters usually explain to me some of the time right here at Third Phase Moon. We spoke to thousands, and many of them recall that it was a certain time they witness a UFO, then all of a sudden maybe an hour, two hours go by, and they can't account for what just happened. And to have four callers within 30 minutes with the same phenomenon, while well, something's going on around the world, and uh, I don't think it's uh, an imagination going on, because Please. you can't imagine video, and some of these UFO videos are quite amazing. 
Doctor, is Mr. Stephen Bassett with us, Dr. Dandy Elias? Yes, we had a little technical issues, but we got Mr. Bassett. Um, let me um, quickly give your your listeners some some background. Um, uh, Paradigm Research Group was able to get the White House to put its position on the ET issue in, in writing for the first time ever, and that was uh, back in October 2011. Um, that position, which is still on the White House website, well, actually, you can't get to it right now because the government shut down, but as soon as they reopen, the We the People section on the White House website will reopen. And up there is um, the, that, that statement. You can also get info on this by going to disclosurepetition.org. Um, and this peti- position was that there's no evidence whatsoever that any life out- it exists outside the planet or an extraterrestrial presence has contacted or engaged any member of the human race. And there's no credible information to, to suggest that any evidence is being hidden from the public eye. That is the White House's position, because it's all untrue. It's all false. So since then, we've been ratcheting up the strategy. We submitted four more petitions to the White House, got them up for at least 30 days, bringing up the evidence they say doesn't exist, and then the citizen hearing was held in Washington. And in that case, we had six former members of Congress, including Mike Gravel, former senator of Alaska, presidential candidate, and a longtime political advocate for change, as well as five other members of Congress. And they heard 30 hours of testimony from some pretty strong witnesses, uh, particularly involving nuclear tampering and a lot of a lot of military people. They were completely stunned by this evidence. They were completely impressed. Uh, and I think most of them are going to be involved in further efforts going forward, but particularly Mike Gravel. So that entire citizen hearing essentially was the evidence was just a portion of the evidence the White House doesn't exist. It was shown to the world. It was webcast around the world. It has been filmed completely in high def. There's going to be DVD sets available in a while. They're going to be sold all over the world. And so um, that has now set us up for what's going to happen next. And what's going to happen next is pretty intense. We're going to launch two parallel initiatives simultaneously. All right. And let me cover the easy one first. The, there will be a UN initiative that will be launched very soon. The Paradigm Research Group, Research Group has set up a foundation which will go operational in perhaps 10 days or less. It's the Citizen Hearing Foundation. It is the 501c3 nonprofit for Paradigm Research Group. And it was set up uh, under the request of the six former members of Congress, uh, four of which signed a communique, uh, which you can find at citizenhearing.org, calling on uh, Paradigm Research Group to set up this foundation, get money to fund a joint multi-nation effort to get a joint resolution, meaning these nations would agree in a resolution to the General Assembly and get a vote to, from the assembly as to whether to hold a world conference, a UN-backed world conference, addressing the evidence um, that is available now. This would, of course, attract a huge amount of attention, just the process itself. And so that's the UN initiative. That's going to be managed from the website citizenhearingfoundation.org, which is not up yet, but it will be up soon. Yes, certainly. Well, we always uh, – you know – what we consider, again, we nickname you the pit bull going after the answers. We just had Stephen Greer on in the first hour, and his approach to getting to disclosure is, okay, the government's not going to work. They're already, you know, already made up their minds, so now it's up to the people. But your endeavor, you're trying to get the United Nations, you know, together as one to start uh, discussing the subject matter. What, in clear terms, in your, you know, in best case scenario would come of this if everything uh, worked out in uh, your endeavors no, the, the, the goal is simple the best case scenario is real simple we, we have not this movement has not succeeded until the president of the united states goes in front of the american people probably on the east wing i'll use that place where he walks out and stands in front of that podium and informs and tells us finally that, that there's an extraterrestrial presence that's it that's they're not shooting for anything less than that and so the purpose of all of this is to get that event. We call I call it disclosure with a capital D. Now he'll either he'll either be doing it first or he'll be doing it after he'll have to go out there on East Wing and 
do it after the Russians have announced it or the, or the Chinese have announced it. But one way or another, he's going to do that. And that's the purpose of this. Uh, the, 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 the strategies that, that PRG is using are, are designed to not only approach government, but also approach the people. The reason is, is that these kind of strategies will generate media coverage, and that media coverage gets to the people, and then they see what's happening, and it generates interest and generates uh, energy. Uh, plus the political media pay attention because you're doing these initiatives. If you don't do these kinds of things, there's nothing for the political media to cover. So our hope is we're going to generate a lot of media coverage of the UN initiative as well as the congressional initiative. And we're going to be sending out tons of press releases on this. I mean, boom, 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 worldwide. So as, as I pointed out, um, the citizen hearing on disclosure is the new factor that may make these congressional hearings possible. Uh, they, they just never, there's been everything like it. So here is, here is, because what you have here is you have former members of Congress taking the testimony and other members of Congress that are currently sitting can watch that. They can actually see it happening. They can see what these hearings would look like if they held them. And they'll realize this is serious business. Right? Because it is the most important issue in the world today, without question. It just isn't seen as such yet. So here is a picture of this the congressional campaign, how it's going to go. First of all, um, if you go to citizenhearing.org, you'll see the campaign there for getting the DVDs of the, of the citizen hearing on disclosure. It's completed, produced, edited, boxed, and ready to go. And we're, we're halfway to our funding needs. We need, what we need is one more executive producer contributor. That would be an individual who puts in 25000 and they would then be the executive producer, accredited as such, on these DVD sets we're going to be selling, and then also the, the sets that are going to be part of the congressional initiative. And the sooner we get that, the sooner we can get cracking. But the point is, we're, we're going to send uh, a, a 10 DVD set edited, promotionally, professionally done, of the entire citizen hearing to every member of Congress, 535 sets. And they're going to be accompanied by a letter signed by scores of witnesses calling for them to meet with PRG's lobbyist, that would be me, to discuss the content of those hearings, the citizen hearing, as well as the immediate need for congressional hearings on Capitol Hill. And that will all go out of one shot. And what that means is we're seeding the hill with 5,300 5, DVDs into an arena with over 1,000 staffers, and every single one of those staffers in those offices has a laptop computer with a DVD player in it. So any one of them can pop some of those DVDs in and watch them. We're hoping to create a kind of viral in, uh, interaction on the Hill where you've got staffers calling each other and saying, wait a minute, did you see this? Did you see that? So that's going to happen, right? One shot. Now, short, shortly after that, I am going to uh, set up office in Washington as close to the hills I can get, and I'm going to start making formal approaches to uh, congressional offices to meet with them. Now, in between those two times, we're going to put out a, 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 a national campaign. And again, I'll be coming on your show to do this, I'm sure. And that campaign is simple. It's saying, look, if you're an American citizen, please contact your, and we'll provide, you know, how they can contact them and all that. What are the dangers of other countries disclosing before we do, if we are the world power? Well, I call it a danger. It's just how disclosure goes down. It's going to have a geopolitical impact on nations. And every nation is going to be affected to some degree by, by disclosure without question. And, uh, well, would that the United back States back the U S into a corner to force them is, is what I'm kind of saying. No, it's not like back into a corner. Look, um, the U S is holding fast. Other nations are, are clearly taking steps that show that they're moving in that direction. But you know, the, the best as I can tell, these other nations, while they're, they're releasing files and cooperating with UFO research groups or what I would call extraterrestrial phenomena research, I do not like the acronym UFO. I try not to use it. Uh, while they're doing that, the U.S. is taking a hard and fast line. And, and as you know, we, the White House stated 
back in October of 2011. There's nothing to this at all, which is our, you know, which is good because it's such a strong Please. statement. It's so easy to to show it's false. But for whatever reason, these other nations are not prepared to preempt the U.S.'s prerogatives. Now understand, there are very complex relationships that exist between the United States and all of the major nations of the world. 